Hi, it's Bob Brasich at NetBootCamp. Today's topic is web page preservation. We'll take a look at two tools. One creates screenshots, the other archives web pages, and we'll test drive both and discuss the pros and cons. Most of the times we're not planning to take a screenshot. We just come across a page and we know we need to capture that. We might need it in the future, but we're not sure. And that's why it's important to plan ahead and assign tools for different tasks. And that's what we'll do in just a moment. And you'll notice that my browser is also set up to document the information of what I'm looking at. This is especially helpful if I'm going to be doing a video recording of my desktop or just a screenshot of my browser frame. So here in Firefox, I have World IP. It's documenting what I'm looking at. It can also be set up to give information about the data center or, or even your location. I'm using Fox Clocks down here that's going to provide a custom look at um, where I'm at physically, the, the date and the time for that. And up here at the top, I'm using another add-on, makes it more legible. And then finally, because Firefox drops it, I add the title back in to the, the, to the top of the, the browser there. So all of these add-ons together help provide information that at any given time I can do a video recording or screenshot and I'm going to uh, document some important information about where I was and what time, it, what time it was. Fireshot is simply a screenshot tool and that's all it does. It creates a ping, JPEG, or PDF. And while there's a light version available on the Mozilla Firefox library, you'll want to purchase the one-time license fee for $40, and here's why. When you capture an image, the image itself is, is not enough. You also need information that's going to authenticate where that was taken at, like the URL, the date and the time, and uh, I think it's also helpful to have your, your initials in there to distinguish later on in a printout, you can say that you did indeed take that picture. So let's take a, a, a screenshot here of the full, uh, full page. We're going to save that as a PDF on Fireshot. And the way I have mine customized, I have it customized so it's going to consistently save uh, files with a particular structure. I like to have my company's initials there and the the information about the website preset and that's because I want to be able to sort my images I won't be able to see that when I'm sitting in court and I'm testifying but it's going to help me uh, 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 sort my images from my clients images or or an attorney I'm working at with but you can see what Fireshot does is I've set it up it's showing the page title for what I'm viewing and then at the bottom, it's watermarking the URL where that was captured, the time and the date that it was taken, and I've added my initials. And then one of the advantages, I can capture actual links. You can see down here in the status bar, when you hover, it will display the destination. And with a hotkey, for me, it's going to be Shift-Z. I can capture that page with, with the link. And that will show up, as you can see down here, on my image, we've, we've captured the, the link that I was hovering over. So I find that's also helpful with uh, Fireshot. So the watermarks are definitely a pro to uh, using Fireshot, and it's also very simple. But the con is that when you're creating an image, you're not capturing the native format of a web page, and that can be a challenge. Let's take a look at that. When you think about the native format of a web page, you probably initially think about the HTML. The HTML is that source code and it determines what image goes here and where that comes from. And of course, the, the text and the colors, etc., etc. But HTML alone is not considered a native format. And that's where a web archiving service comes in. And our example here is webpreserver.com. An archiving service saves more than the image. It, this particular service will save the image. It saves the HTML, but it also saves all of the information that 
was related, related to loading this page, rendering this page. So let's take a look at Web Preserver in action. Uh, like Fireshot, we select our icon from the menu bar. We can choose to add additional information through tags and descriptions. And we can also, like Fireshot, save it to a, uh, a cloud service or, or also download it in, in this case. So I'm going to do both. So Web Preserver takes a moment to process, and we've already downloaded the files. It comes down in a zip file, and once we open it, we can see the, the contents here. We have an HTML file. This is the metadata. This is uh, descriptions about uh, each of the, of the files and, and, and the dates and, and, and stamps behind that. These are the e-discovery tools that a, an attorney would use to... To, uh, to, to manage these files in their larger inventory, and so is this. We have a screenshot uh, image of the JPEG, and then we have a, uh, a uh, PDF, and I can show you that. Let's zoom in on this. So the way Web Preserver does this, they, they document the time and date based on their server time, but they also provide this file hash. The hash is unique because each web page is unique. A hash is basically it's like a calculation of all the resources combined what does that equal and it equals this unique number if you were to compare this hash to what's on the YouTube server at this moment or at that same moment in time the hash values should be equal and that way it's hard to contest that this is not the same uh, piece of evidence. It's not the same item that you're claiming it is to be. But the most interesting thing that's available in a web archiving service is going to be the work file itself. Now the work file has all the information about how the this evidence was captured. It was captured with the 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 the, the work add-on from Web Preserver and then it begins to document all of the steps that it took to acquire, reach out to the resources, I call them assets, like an image, uh, a JavaScript, and then bring them back, all the links in that page. So for example, I can search for an image here. I'm gonna search for last modified, and we can see that for this particular image here, and I can open that up right there, the information from the work file showed when we reached out to the server and what the status of that image was and any unique identification related to that image. That's much more elaborate than HTML and it's certainly much more detail than a screenshot. So the other unique thing about a service like Web Preserver is you have a dashboard and with this dashboard you can share access to evidence with attorneys, other investigators, you can uh, you can download information from there. Uh, here's our here's our YouTube example, and we can view it, and we can also uh, share comments with with other collaborators on that particular uh, item. Web preservation services are normally a subscription service. You probably don't need to create a work file every day. And in order to do that, there are options out there, and that includes WarCreate. WarCreate's a Google Chrome extension. It, it enables you to generate a work file from any page that you're visiting. You should check to make sure that uh, it's not capturing any histories that, that from other pages that you're visiting as well. I've, I've noticed that occurring. WebRecorder.io is another option, and it enables you to uh, download the file or save it to Dropbox and uh, you can also replay it through the website. So that's Work Create and Web Recorder. There are good reasons to use supplemental archive services and MHT is one of those. MHT is actually a very old file system. It goes back to Internet Explorer and it saves the text and graphics together in a singular file. You can do this on uh, uh, Firefox by simply selecting uh, the MHT icon. But for a timeline like on social media platform like uh, Twitter and Facebook, you'll want to scroll down and, and uh, 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 
uh, open up all of the all of the files because a lot of the files are being cached by Ajax so you want to make sure they all get captured so I scroll down and then I'll capture my uh, my MHT file so the MHT file saves everything just as it as it originally looked and uh, you can interact with it of course hyperlinks going outside of the file or going to go to uh, other web pages and you've only saved the, the the current web page that you're looking at so MHT it's great for uh, backing up social media posts, uh, web pages. It doesn't uh, replace work, but it's a it's a it's a great supplemental uh, uh, archival system. For Net Bootcamp, I'm Bob Rasich. Thanks and have a great day.